sane. When I got up this morning, I will have been at school for 53 years. That figure has now doubled to minus 17. I am prowling down the aisle of a church, waiting for it to turn back into the school. Behind me, I leave a trail of hoof prints that have always been there. Travelling faster than light, a glass aardvark lightly brushes my eardrum. Holding on to the aardvark's tails are thirteen million joyriding penguins. Some of them are jolted off as their transport slowly metamorphoses into a concrete kangaroo and begins to float upward. Abruptly, the church shimmers and the school is back. It certainly took its time. I prance into the classroom on my rapidly dwindling number of legs and, folding back my wings, sit on a chair as it turns into a telephone. Caught off balance, I fall to the ceiling and crack one of my heads on a passing shoebox. Rubbing the bruise with a spare mandible, I try to blink vision back into my compound eyes, but my sight continues to fade. The world swims and recedes, and I... I open my eyes. I am lying in what looks like a closed room. The floor and walls seem to be covered in the same soft white material. Above me, a single light bulb is too bright. Seemingly unable to move either of my two arms for the moment, I just lie and look up at the bulb. I begin to grow nervous, waiting for it to start looking back at me, turn into a zebra, anything. I count my own heartbeats as I wait for something to change, for the dimensions of the room to become impossible, or for an upside-down tree to grow from the floor, for me to change to a god or a mouse. Sweat breaks out on my brow that should have been something else by now. I cast around the unchanging room with eyes that refuse to grow on stalks. I feel panic growing, overflowing. Then I hear myself scream with a voice that is totally and unremittingly human. But the plain, white, padded walls remain unceasingly real, simply existing. I stare at the inside of my incomprehensible prison willing the surface to transmogrify as the shouting in my brain blots out all thought. But nothing happens. Nothing happens. Again, I lose consciousness. Again, I open my eyes. Twelve of them. My mind, soaked in stress, floods with relief. I'm back home where everything is as it should be. I'm where I belong. But my slowly elongating brain remains unquiet. The question keeps asking itself, where was I? Have I truly escaped? No matter how safe I seem now, I can't deny the possibility that one day I may be dragged back to that other place, and perhaps, just maybe, I won't get back.